Hello and welcome back to another World of Warcraft discussion video. This time we're going to be talking about scaling and uh, some of the various ways that it can be applied to the game. Now first of all, I always like doing a feedback video to these um, videos in which I go through some audience comments and responses and I just highlight the good stuff basically. So if you do have any thoughts on this, um, after you watch the video, be sure to stick them down in the comments because I will have a chat about it. Anyway, so let's jump into the main video itself. So scaling, what is scaling? Well, it's basically the idea of your character's item level, or just level, basically, being scaled down to a um, to fit with a dungeon, a raid, or a zone. Or perhaps a dungeon or a raid could be scaled up to you. Really, the specifics don't particularly matter. Now, the scaling system is actually fully functional. Back in, I think it's one of the 5.4 PTRs, MMO Champion managed to get it working, and um, essentially they were in Blackrock Depths or something like that, and they were properly scaled down to the level of the dungeon. That's quite cool, but the reason why Blizzard hasn't actually done anything with it is because the system has lacked a fully functioning reward scheme. Basically, they can implement the system, they just don't have any reason why people would go and do it. And that is definitely a bit of an issue because if they make it too heavy in the like the terms of rewarding endgame gear or anything like that, then it just undercuts the current content and adding a whole bunch of transmog sets could perhaps be additional work for the art team that they just can't uh, like manage at the minute. So it's definitely an interesting discussion, and in this video I'm going to be talking about raids, dungeons, zones, and then finally low-level PvP. But of course we're mainly going to be talking about raids because honestly, they're kind of what matters to the most people. Um, you know, going back and getting that nostalgia trip of the old raids. So, let's just uh, start talking about old raids. First of all, there is an intrinsic value um, in going back and experiencing these old bosses at roughly the intended difficulty. Uh, the vast majority of the player base has not experienced even close to most of the raid tiers at the intended difficulty, so scaling could really open up a great deal of content to a lot of people. Now, of course, no reward scheme would come close to the current tiers in terms of item level rewards, but as long as there are decent rewards available, then it could be a really fantastic addition to the game. Right now, there are a total of 34 raids, that is not including ones that have been removed like Z, uh, ZG and ZA, and then of those 34, 29 of them are pre-Missa Pandaria. Imagine getting 29 reasonably difficult raids! That is an immense amount of content, and because they can just scale your characters, it's not a crazy amount of work. Now, uh, let's first of all talk about some of the reasons why this would be good, and for this section I'm just going to assume that there is a decent reward structure. I will talk about reward structures in specific after this. So, having a large back catalogue of available scaled raids would give a wide range of benefits to the game. First of all, people can go back and experience the old raids at the intend, um, intended difficulty, and sure, it is not the same as legacy servers, absolutely not, but for those people who have been pining for legacy servers, it's certainly better than nothing. Honestly, from what we've heard from Blizzard, legacy servers are not going to happen, and this is probably your best bet, other than going back to a private server. Um, it would also lead to a more healthy pugging scene. Now, I doubt that um, if Blizzard were to implement this difficulty scaling, that it would be perhaps as hard as normal mode. Honestly, I think it would be more likely um, at either flex level or somewhere in between that and normal. If they were to make it LFR level, I'd be very, very disappointed. So honestly, I can see it basically being the equivalent to flex in terms of difficulty. And uh, honestly, this content does seem quite well suited for pugs. It's the kind of thing that a lot of people just think, hey, let's go back, uh, advertise and trade chat and the group finder, and then away they go. So for the pugging scene, I think this could be very, very healthy. There are a lot of people with curiosity as to how things were back in the day. Maybe they just want to go and have a quick grull kill. Well, those people can just uh, quickly get a pug together and have a bit of fun content. Hopefully it wouldn't perhaps require as much planning as, say, going for a current patch normal or something like that. So it could definitely work out quite well in that regard. Then it would also provide a nice break in pace for established raiding teams. Sure, the current tier is great, but sometimes a change of pace is definitely nice. This is especially true if they continue to go down the route of just having one single large raid tier, um, raid per tier, rather than having multiple small ones. Personally, I just wish we could have multiple small raids per tier because I think that's a way better just way of doing things, but unfortunately it does just seem to be this kind of like route of one large 14 boss raid, which sometimes just gets a bit old. And uh, if these older raids were scaled up, then it would be a nice opportunity to get a change in scenery once in a while. 
and I'm sure that after a solid week of killing orcs, many people would just love to head back and chill out in ICC for a raid night. So I think that's another fantastic benefit of a system like this. Then also from a marketing perspective, this would be quite the thing. There are no MMOs that can boast, or that would be able to boast, um, having so many relevant max level bosses. If they were able to utilize nine years of old content in a relevant and fun way, then the positive PR for the game would be fantastic. I can also see it bringing a lot of people back to the game. A lot of people have quit WoW since their favorite expansion, and they would probably just jump at the chance of having a an, oppor an, um, yeah, an opportunity to go back and play that nostalgic content again. Maybe it only lasts for a month or two, but it certainly gets people in the door, and um, they're able to also experience the current patch, like the new stuff, so they could be brought in by the old stuff that they want to revisit, and then they could be kept by the great new content that Blizzard provides. This, in combination with the level 90 boost feature that's coming with Warlords of Draenor, that is, of course, free with the box, means that people would also be readily able to just get up to max level and then start doing some of those scale dungeons. They would, in one swoop, give many people a reason to go back to the game, and then give people an easy way to get to the content that they want to do. From a business perspective, it's, it's pretty damn savvy, if I'm honest. It would definitely work out quite well. Then another benefit is just less burnout. People get really burnt out when they see the same content day in, day out. We have all spent enough time in Siege of Orgrimmar, um, Throne of Thunder, the Timeless Isle, the Isle of Thunder, whatever. We spend a lot of time there, and a bit more variation in the game would be great. If maybe one of those raid nights you, you go back to another place, or just maybe instead of doing your daily Timeless Isle show how reputation grind, you go back and uh, kill Ulduar. That's all variation in the gameplay, that's what's going to keep people at max level and uh, just keep them playing the game and prevent them from burning out. Burnout really is just such a massive issue with an MMO like this. I'm just really it's with the nature of how reward schemes have to work in MMOs. So yeah, there is just some of the really positive reasons why this could help the game. Of course, they all did assume we would have a decent reward structure in place. And well, it's time to brainstorm for a reward structure. This is going to be a kind of hard bit, actually, because not even Blizzard themselves have came up with an option that they like. Now, first of all, I'm going to talk about things like gear and valor points and that kind of thing, and I'm not convinced that it would actually pan out this way, but I think it's still worth mentioning, um, especially with the Raid of the Week idea. So first of all, they could offer gear. Uh, definitely not the best gear, or even close to being the best gear, but stuff that's perhaps usable endgame gear all the same. Uh, this is definitely one of the strongest carrots that they could implement to get people into these old raids. And personally, I think that it would be very, very, very hard to implement this correctly. The current tier obviously, like, just obviously needs to be the most optimal one for all difficulty levels, excluding Looking for Raid. Looking for Raid is going to be a little bit more of a tourist mode when we move into the next expansion, so it's okay if uh, some skill back old raids were to perhaps offer slightly better gear than LFR. After all, they would be more difficult, so that would make sense, right? And since these scaled up raids would be harder, I, I just, yeah, it would be cool. Anyway, so, since it would also slot in between the tiers of LFR and Flex in terms of gear, it wouldn't cause much item level bloat. Uh, think of it as being on par with perhaps maybe a bit better than the patch 5.3 and 5.4 loot that we got from the solo outdoor PvP, sorry, PvE content. So perhaps just a little bit better than the Battlefield Baron's gear, or a little bit better than those Timeless Isle 496s. Um, this could, in theory, work out, but I'm just not convinced that they would do it. It certainly does run the risk of undermining the current patch, which is certainly something that Blizzard does not want to do. It does have plenty of pluses, but it also has a lot of minuses, and usually you just want to go with a decision that has lots of pluses, not that many minuses. I think this would not happen. Now, the thing that they could do is the Raid of the Week. And back in Wrath of the Lich King, there was a cool, well, Raid of the Week system. It was a weekly quest, and it would carry some pretty nice rewards in terms of Emblems of Frost, basically Valor points. What it would do is it would send you into an older Wrath of the Lich King raid to kill a certain boss. It was not that hard, and it had some great bonuses. And, and it, was, it was also just another weekly thing that would keep people busy. And then, of course, it would provide a nice break from the ra regular raiding schedule. It was also highly beneficial to the pugging scene. If they were just, I, I don't know, if they, I just think if they were able to implement this for old raids, it would be cool. And they could just, say, scale down one old raid per week. 
or scale up even, and then reward players for clearing that, or they could just scale down all the old raids and select new one for the quest every week. Basically, if they are able to come up with another reward scheme such as Transmog Gear, then I think they should just scale all the raids and then just have one of them be the quest raid of the week. But if they can't come up with any other reward scheme, then I think just having one raid per week that gets scaled and then has a quest associated with it would probably be the right option. In terms of just what I was saying about this helping out the pugging scene, it really is great because there's one little set bit of content that should be easily puggable and that just really is nice for creating a bit of a cohesive pugging scene across different ra um, not raids, realms. So it could be quite good. And also thanks to that dude on Twitter to, uh, for reminding me about this. Anyway, so that's uh, Raid of the Week covered. Let's move on to rewards and points and things like that. Uh, they could perhaps give a limited amount of valor or justice. Exact balancing would, of course, be extremely hard, but it's also very hard to say what would be right, because these points do have a greatly diminished value as of patch 5.4, and really we're rather unsure as to how they will be imp um, implemented in Warlords of Draenor. I think that putting in too much endgame progression into these old raids would be a ginormous mistake, and honestly, it would just detract from the current raid tiers, and I don't think that's the way to go. Now, what a lot of people do like is cosmetic things, so let's talk about just that. There is the idea of transmog sets, right? People love transmog after all, they like being in shiny, cool-looking armor. There are definitely a few ways of doing this, though. First of all, they could offer a new, perhaps higher-resolution version of some of the old tier gear. This would, in theory, be nice because, um... Well, it's new gear for people, it does look a little bit more polished up, and therefore it's a little bit more of a carrot. Though I could see some people taking issue with them changing out the older gear, which is of course a valid concern because often people want an exact look, and uh, anything that causes changes to that look can make them just get a little bit salty. They could of course just leave the current bits of gear where they are and then introduce this new transmog high res version into the scaled mode, but the disparity would be very odd in my opinion and I'm not convinced that it would happen. Now, it could actually be possible, because when making art assets, companies like Blizzard, they make a nice high-resolution version and then they scale it down for the game. So there are probably, well, nearly definitely high-res versions of these armor sets floating about the place. Still though, it would seem very ham-fisted and bizarre to stick them in in this manner. What they could do though, is reward special, unique transmog items. I'm not sure what, but over the years, World of Warcraft's raids have touched on many different art styles and many different themes. Some cool raid or even tier themed transmog items could be very compelling to a lot of people, especially if Blizzard would make them with pre-existing gear sets in mind. So say there's a really popular transmog set in, in Burning Crusade and maybe Blizzard just think, well, there's maybe a cool transmog only weapon that would look really well with some of those sets so they could just make it and put it into a scaled up version of the raid. That would certainly be nice, but it could actually feel very muddled to players. If you were to have 29 skilled up raids, then there would definitely be a lot of kind of random contrived and, well, basically just random bits of gear that they throw in there that perhaps wouldn't be too cohesive and maybe wouldn't fit that well. So it's a bit of an issue there. Now, what they could also do is just add brand new transmog sets that are themed around certain raid tiers or even whole expansions. Perhaps they could make a Wrath of the Lich King set and then just spread that over the whole expansion or something like that. That, of course, could actually feel just a little bit silly though, and it could also lead to people leaving raids early once they just have the piece that they need. Because the, like, the pieces would have to be spread between so many bosses, the rewards in every individual raid would be rather sparse. So I think that doing it on an expansion by expansion basis could just be a bit problematic. They could do it on a tier by tier basis and that would be really fantastic, however I do question the feasibility. This game has had many many raid tiers and making enough transmog sets to fill that gap would likely be too much for the art team who are already extremely busy with new warlords of Draenor content, like the garrisons and the new models and the new raids, items, etc. So yeah, that probably wouldn't work out too well. Another thing that they could do is increase the drop rates on class specific gear and then use the personal loot system. So you could, for an example, run a raid at a scale difficulty with the knowledge that the drop rates of the nice transmog sets that you want are a bit higher. This could be a compelling reason to go, for many to go back, but I would worry that over time, once people get the transmog sets, they just have no reason to go back and that this feature would then die off. So that's definitely an issue. Then they could also offer achievements. Like, uh, these achievements could perhaps give you new mounts, new pets, or maybe reskinned or slightly edited versions of older ones. 
they could perhaps also implement some sort of reward point system that could go towards some cool cosmetic items, but I guess that's more of a genu general feature suggestion for the achievement point system. Anyway, people love their shinies, so if there is some way to get unique pets and mounts via these achievements, it could be quite a good incentive. I've also seen one or two arguments about getting reputation for certain factions, and that it may be an increased rate. I think that could actually work out quite well, but Blizzard would maybe be a little bit worried that it would undermine some of the current, like, old world dailies. That said, those old world uh, dailies are really not very important at all, are they? Like, who really gives a crap about the Argent Crusade or, I don't know, something like that? Perhaps it would be a nice reason just if you could quickly gain rep by doing old scale versions of the raids. It certainly is one method. So, um, yeah, finally, they could just do a mix of the above. Throw loads of cool shit into the old raids, scale them up, and let players do whatever they want with the system. If none of the items were new, though, it probably wouldn't pan out too well, so there definitely needs to be some new content in there. And I think one of the largest problems that Blizzard has is they don't really have the time to make enough content to fill out all of those scaled raids. Well, they don't have enough time making new reward content, but they do have the basic system that would allow them to make at least the raids themselves viable. So it definitely is quite a quite a hard thing, really. Honestly, I think that what they could do is on a patch-by-patch -patch basis, or maybe just over time, they slowly scale up raids one by one to offer people a different experience. Maybe not uh, on par with the current tier, but at least a different experience. They could just make an extra set or two per tier and throw it into an old dungeon or an old raid, scale it up, and then that could be an alternate form of gameplay. Hell, it would be quite nice having a raid patch basically consist of a new current tier raid, an upscaled old raid, then a new outdoor PvE zone. Or perhaps the interim patches in between raid patches could implement something like this. They could maybe just scale up ICC, and then that would give people something fun to do in the sort of intermission between raid tiers, which could be cool. Anyway, so that's it about raids. Basically, um, the mix of all this stuff could work out quite well, and if they were to implement this nearly perfectly, it could just hit a perfect combination and really create a truly engaging and compelling experience. There's a hell of a lot of potential, and I hope that if they do do it at some point, that they get it right. So, with raids covered, let's move on to dungeons. Now, these next sections of the video are honestly going to be a decent bit shorter because, well, a lot of the... I don't want to repeat what I've already said, basically, in terms of raids. So, for dungeons, many of the same raids apply. Same raids? No, many of the same arguments apply um, to dungeons as, as did for raids. And what this would do is it would allow people to play with their low-level friends, which would be quite nice. It opens up more gameplay to more people, which is always a good thing. But the question is, what would the high-level characters get? Well, if they were under the maximum level, then they could certainly just get experience. This would uh, this would be a very nice alternative to break up questing. However, it could take people away from the current leveling dungeons, which may be a little bit of an issue. It could also, um, because of that, increase random queue times and things like that. Then you could also be rewarded with some transmog or cosmetic stuff. Maybe it could be in a form of a few different sets that are gathered as you clear out some of the harder scaled versions of the older dungeons. And then also there are a lot of cool sets from times like, say, Burning Crusade that are quite nice. You know, just those random offsets that happen to look pretty cool. Maybe they could make those into proper transmog sets, throw them in some scaled up dungeons, or maybe even scaled up raids, and uh, there you go. There's a nice, like a brand new nice reward scheme in there. So that could be good, and maybe these could be fixed rewards. Then, I suppose a little bit of Valor or Justice is possible, however, this faces the same problems that I talked about earlier. Overall, though, I think this would be a very excellent feature. It would allow people to play with their friends, regardless of their level, which is really kind of good. Often, we get our friends into the game, but then we can't play with them without rolling up a new character, and many of us just don't have the time to level up a character alongside a friend. Then, of course, for that friend, they feel completely alone with the questing experience because the person who got them into World of Warcraft is sitting there at level 100 and basically not able to play with them. So this would be a nice way to get people to play together. This also does sort of tie in with Recruit a Friend. Um, I'll talk about that in, uh, in a little bit, though. So the next instance in which they can apply this system is Zones and Quests. And I've seen a lot of people talk about this idea. Essentially, you would be leveled down to a zone's intended level. Now, I don't think this would be very good on the whole, because it would take away a degree of character progression in between zones. One of the nice things about your character becoming more powerful is that the older content feels quite a bit easier. 
and that's a power creep that's kind of important, actually. If you were just to fly back into Elwyn Forest and just start getting ganked by Defias bandits, it would be very, very bizarre on your max level character. So that wouldn't work, but there is one way in which this can work, and it could actually be tied to Recruiter Friend as well. Basically, it would be nice to have the option to scale down your level to someone else in your party. This means that you could quest with your friend without insta-killing everything. So basically, you could help out your friend, you could socialize, but you wouldn't really compromise the actual gameplay. Because if you have a quest to kill a certain amount of monsters or something, and then your level 90 friend just goes in and uses volley or something crazy and just kills everything, then it's not really too good, is it? Um, it's more like power leveling instead of the other person playing the game. Now this could also work out quite well with, um, with Recruit a Friend. You could scale down your main and then help your friend leveling while still giving them that XP bonus that linked accounts get. Perhaps quests and things like that could reward the max level character with some gold, just like a max level daily would. And then finally, one quick little word about player versus player. In keeping with the theme of playing with friends as they level up, it would be nice if your skill down character could go into PvP with them. Of course, abilities past your skill level would have to be disabled for balancing purposes, and while that could be very messy with action bars, it would still be a nice option. But yeah, that is essentially it. I think scaling is really fantastic. If they implement it well, it could just provide a great breadth of content to a lot of people, and honestly could invigorate a lot of people into the game. A lot, um, well, often you hear about people saying, oh, back in the day of uh, Burning Crusade, or back in the day of Wrath of the Lich King, and uh, a lot of those people just want to go do that raid, uh, go do those raids again. And giving them a reason or a, an ability to do that would certainly be very beneficial to the game, especially in terms of getting up those subscriber numbers. Blizzard loves their subscribers. Um, I mean, from a monetary perspective, I I'm sure they like us. But they, they do want to make money off us, and the more subscribers they get, the more money. Therefore, if they can apply this system and then have basically more content than basically any other game out there, like ever, then I think it would be quite good for the subscriber count, really. So, yeah, stay classy, Blizzard. Please do try to do this, because I think a lot of us want it in the game. And that's really it for me. But that's not it. I do want to know what you have to say about this. I always follow up videos like this with a response video where I highlight some viewer comments and have a bit of a chat with them and basically do that kind of thing. So if you want to be featured on that, be sure to leave a comment. And that is it for the video. If you want to support the channel, you can check out my Patreon page. I am currently trying to secure a little bit of funding for uh, some sort of high-end tech computery things that could really improve the channel. And honestly would cost so much that I would have to live in a cardboard box for the next few months, which would be a little bit suboptimal. Um, yeah, so that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time.